Welcome back everybody, my name is Tobias and this is the 12th episode in my 100% completion playthrough of Living Skyrim 3. If you are enjoying the series so far, perhaps give it a like, consider subscribing, and if you're not, then drop a comment telling me why. I'm always interested in feedback. No messing around, back to Skyrim. Alrighty, welcome back. In the last one, we got our character back up to speed with this newly created Emmy, progressing the companion's quest line. This time, we have a functional werewolf form as part of our character's abilities. Okay, now let's have a look at our quest points. I believe it is a good idea to... We'll go Stamina, and we'll go Health. Looks like we picked up a few few levels from the last episode. We're working with five skill points. Let's see where we can allocate them. First off, let's have a look at the Restoration Tree. Having a look at it, the only additional perks I want to unlock are Necromage for the increased effect and duration on Undead. And all the way down here for Intervention. Just because it would be very nice to know we have this as a backup if we do happen to fall. Both, oh, both of these perks require us to get to 70 and 100 restoration respectively. So we're not going to touch any of the perks that lead up to those two uh, for quite some time. Next up is alteration. We have reached 20, which means we can unlock one additional perk in the magic resistance. Other than that, we have Alteration Jewel Casting, which we're not doing. Protection spells like Stone Flesh are 100% stronger if not wearing any armor, which isn't doesn't work for us because we are a heavy armor character. Enchanting and Smithing is just not something I'm delving into yet. We haven't had any need whatsoever to create any armors, temper or strengthen any of our armor, enchant our weapons or armor, so on and so forth. So until we do, I'm going to leave these two trees alone. In the heavy armor tree, the main perk we're walking toward, towards is this one here. I would really, really like our heavy armor to weigh nothing so that our Stamina drain when running or in combat is significantly less. We're almost there at 47. We need 50. We have Face of Death. Other heavy armor perks no longer require a helmet. Armor rating of heavy armor pieces is increased by 20% if not wearing a helmet. I'm going to do a little bit of testing on this perk to see what the difference is as far as our um, armor rating with or without a helmet and with or without this perk. So until I do, I'm going to leave this one alone. I don't think it is going to be life or death for the time being. If we gra don't grab it, we have cushioned. We are not interested in that. We're not going to be falling. And if we do fall to death, then that's our own fault. Uh, taking an incoming hit in all heavy armor has a 10% chance to stagger an attacker. So I think a movable object is definitely worthwhile. We're always wearing heavy armor. And staggering our opponents gives us an opening on them. Now we have block. Weapon block. We're not blocking with any weapons, so that isn't necessary. 
Power Bash, which I think we looked at before. I have tested this, and I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it does seem like this doesn't work. The bashing animation doesn't seem any different, and the damage or stagger effect from using a bash or power dash um, with this perk unlocked doesn't seem to change anything so that 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 perk could be broken next and last is the one-handed skill tree obviously we want the additional perk in denting blows but we need 60 for this dual flurry dual savagery and blade dancer lines we are not going to pick up because we are a sword and board type Disciplined Fighter, one-handed power attacks cost 25% less stamina. So we're definitely going to pick this one up. That is definitely worthwhile. And one-handed power attacks do 0.1% more damage per point of stamina. Again, that seems really nice. It also unlocks decapitations, which sounds fun to me. We have one skill point left over, but we're not going to apply it anywhere we'll just keep it for the time being with that being said in today's episode we are going to continue with the companions with what i believe to be yep blood's honor we have to collect our glenmore witch's head with the option of wiping out the witches we were tasked to do this by codlac as he's looking for a cure for lycanthropy but before we head out from our safe house, I do want to quickly go over the progression of the Dragonborn Gallery and its own questline. So, at certain intervals, um, you unlock, not only do you unlock certain extras for the museum and the safe house, you unlock additional um, artifacts to pursue through quests at the uh, study desk but you also unlock the guild house for the explorers society which is the archaeology guild so at the end of the previous episode i forgot to show this but i had a quick chat with urian who has now asked us to establish the explorers guild the guild for archaeologists so he is beginning the guild charter and I'm going to be building the guild house. Once I complete it, I can check back with him. Now we're not going to be looking at this just yet, but I thought it was worth mentioning that at some point we're going to have to acquire a bunch of building materials, very similar to the way that you would build a house in the normal Hearthfire DLC to build the guild house, which is... Um, no, we're not need to do that yet. Which is an extension of the Dragonborn Gallery. Alright, uh, a bit of a long-winded explanation for all of that. But let's head out to... Northwestern Falkreath Hold is where I will find them. Can I tag it? Yes, I can. So we haven't actually discovered Falkreath yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of an exploring, a bit of a wander all the way from Riverwood, discovering anything along the way. I'm going to travel up through Falkreath, which I believe is around about here, and then continue west to Glen Moral Coven. Let's get to it. So interjecting again um, before we head off. If I... I tend to go for a bit of a wander. I look around in all the shops and sales, merchants, just to see if they've got anything interesting. If they do, I tend to, I, I will show you. Um, but also as I'm exploring in houses and so be it, if I find anything interesting, any artifacts of note, I will show them. The blacksmith, the solitude blacksmith on the... Top floor has a unique here, the Nin Jato. Worth picking up. Hey, watch it. 
I'll also point out as well, blacksmiths can sometimes have crafting books. In this case, this particular blacksmith had the Northern Variations and Nordic Crusader. This just adds additional armor and weapon pieces to uh, Smith. I picked them up because they're cheap and later on they might be useful. Um, however, you can only, you can't, I'll say, unlock everything because this book asks me to have an apprentice smithing level, which I can't do, but the Northern variants does have novice. So later on, I'm going to point this out because if later on you see that I'm capable of smithing something that perhaps you've never seen before or you can't if you're playing Living Skyrim as well, it may be because I have picked up additional crafting recipes through books you can find um, being sold at blacksmiths or any, I guess other merchants can probably sell them as well, but blacksmiths tend to um, fluctuate their stock regarding those types of books. Alrighty, another thing to keep in mind in bits and pieces, still in solitude, you have Summer, Samer. And she sells additions to the safe house. Different variants of the armory, followers furniture, garden, kids furniture, patio, a prison, and a teleporter. These are very expensive. And I won't be buying them at this point in the game. But I definitely will unlock them eventually. She also sells the spell books, but nothing of note. I tend to go through merchants every now and then. And I will buy any books that have a display in the, um, in the museum. So there's a couple here that they're all very cheap and worth picking up. Now, before we leave the bits and pieces, it is also worth pointing out the two artifacts she has on these shelves. Unfortunately, they're labeled as steel, so I'll have to come back to these at a later date, try and sneak in, try and pick them up without her noticing. She is very, very persistent in wanting to keep an eye on you, so... We'll have to do it when the store is closed or while she is sleeping. The next shop to be aware of is Books of Skyrim. And it is a mod add-on for LS and it's exactly what you think it is. It is a shop that sells all the books you can think of. Because there are so many... And there are so many that are that have displays in the museum. This is a exceptionally good shop or resource or mod to have to find all the books you can think of that can be displayed. I've already gone through here myself and picked up. Looks like there's just one more. Picked up all the books that have displays. They're all fairly cheap. So I you won't see me do this because it's kind of tedious. And, I mean, it's just a shop that sells books. But I thought it was worth pointing out. Because it is where time. I get the majority of my displays from. Uh, currently. Why the figure is so much higher than it was previously. Because you just come in here. You buy all the books. You reset their inventory. You buy another set of books. It is a very, very easy way of um, increasing the display count. Uh, apart from that, I will meet you at Riverwood to continue on. Okay, we're at Riverwood finally. I know and I am sorry for the lengthy or long-winded intro and explanation of certain aspects of my playthrough. It At this stage of my content creation journey, it is really hard for me to know what is what I should show, what I shouldn't, what I should just skip and leave out. So if you have feedback on that regard, I'm really happy to hear it. But we're at Riverwood now, so we're going to travel down 
like we mentioned, all the way across through Falkreath to Glen Moral Coven. One additional aspect that you will notice, because I actually did leave it out, is additions to the auto cast spells I have available and set up. So I will, they both trigger, I have two, two new ones that trigger in combat in the same way as our Oak Flesh. But I will show that off when we get into combat again. We are coming up to what I'm sure we are all very, very familiar with. The original set of three Guardian Stones. And now would also be a good opportunity to show a, an addition, a mod addition of my own. So this mod allows me to convert dragon souls into skill points. This won't be used for a very long time. We haven't even activated dragons yet. But I like to have it in case um, in case we're running low on skill points. You can set it up. The base value is 10 souls per skill point. I am also more than okay removing this mod entirely or just not using it. It is really up to you. But at some point, very late game, we may want to have a, a few additional skill points to increase our, um, fill out our build, so essentially, and this will be one way of doing that. You also see a new mace, the Skull Basher. This was a unique weapon that Orion just handed over to me. It's a mace. It does stamina damage just like my old one, but it swings a little faster. Health brief. This way. We have a bandit camp. Let's, well, let's do it. Let's go into combat and we'll see if the spells go off. That's close enough. That's close enough. We have to be five or six and they're being very cautious in the same way that I am. Let's get in. Yep, so we got Aura of Vigor and Aura of Might. And as you can also see, Skullbasher is much faster. Woo! Very close to being absolutely... Nobody left. So, what are these auras? They are restoration skills and I believe really work really well for the paladin archetype that my character has. So Aura of Might, caster and living or undead allies deal 72% more attack damage and you can release it for 36 fire and sun damage. Aura of Vigor, casting and living or undead allies heal 27 points per second and I can release it for invulnerability. It has a very low cost but it is a drain these both drain mana enough so they have an initial low cost value to cast but drain um per second i believe i could be wrong looks like we have a unique the dragon jar and i know that that is a 
skill point book one-handed perk book or not perk book or we'll call it an insight book and this is the original treasure map treasure map one I will show all the locations of the treasure maps as we get them. However, for now, there is no need. What I will do is I will just collect all the treasure maps. Well, I, I will, at some point, I will go out on purpose to collect all the treasure maps. And then I will make a video specifically going around and collecting all all going to all the treasure map locations and collecting the loot. But now that it's daytime, we can see how glorious the game is. I'm definitely happy that I switched over to the Skull Crusher, though. It is very nice, very quick. Oh, look at you. Did you get him? You, you did! Nice shot! Does he pick him up? What does he do? Just a hunter. We have a pillar of dead grasp. Dead grasp. Yep. An element of living Skyrim that we are fairly far away from. Cleared. Falkreath Watchtower. Somehow. Where even is that? Valkyrie Watchtower. Interesting. Right, so let's see. So it sh Right, so it doesn't go off immediately. So when I go into combat, it waits 15 seconds to go off. Hmm. I assume that Falkreath... Ah, Falkreath is up there. I do want to... I do want to discover Falkreath, so we're just going to... Backtrack a little bit and head around so that we have an opportunity to fast travel back at some point. There we go. Now we'll travel back to the pillar. Another kitty cat. Your one-handed skill leveled up. Which attribute do you want to increase? So this is this occurs at level 50, 75, and 100, or level 50 and 100. I don't know what each of these attributes increases. Um I think we'll go, we'll just go with strength. Yeah, one-handed increase to 50. There you go. Just an additional character building um, element. Half moon mill. Hello, Elk. Bye, Elk. Jesus.
I removed Valor of Vigor to sorry Valor of Might completely from the auto cast because there is just no way of doing it. It'll just continue to repeat every second because it is a hold spell, and I guess it doesn't understand. Holding it does what it says, it increases my attack strength, and then I can release for a wave of damage. But the Aura of Vigor is a heal, a heal aura, which I've set to trigger when I get under 50% health, instead of just in combat. So in combat and under 50% health, and we're going to see how that goes. We need to head left. Who do we have here Hello? first? You. Over here, please. I need help. Help? Thank Chinnereth for you, stranger. I'd almost given up hope of walking away from here. Right? What are you doing here? I tracked a bear to this den. Good coin for those pelts. We had the big sow cornered when they showed up. Three of them, out of nowhere. Spriggans. Neils went down before we even knew to run. Ari died just inside. I never even thought the things were real. I may have lost a drop or two of blood. Truth is, I'm not going anywhere like this. Ah, hurts to breathe. I may know a spell that could work. Thank you. Please hurry. And I, in fact, do have healing. I do have healing hands. Apparently just not on me. Yes. Much better. There you go. But now what? I can't just walk away. Not with my friends' bodies in there being torn apart by those beasts. Well, it... I understand. Let me help you. That for a stranger? I don't know what to say. Lead on, I suppose. Okay. We might as well quickly go in. Okay. The bears are dead, and we have two. One down. Two down. Where's the bear? Or oh, two bears. Okay, so the whole cave has a few. If I'm quick, there's no reason why I can't just clear them out. Oh, I thought that rock was a bear. Not a bear. There we go. Moss Mother Cavern cleared. Now you have you do justice, if you can call it that. Look, I want you to have this. I know it isn't much, but it's important to me. Ari gave me this dagger when we first started hunting together. I always said it brought her luck. You should be the one to carry it now. I'll give them a proper burial, then head back. Come find me if you're ever in Fall Creek. You'll always be welcome at my door. Good to know. You got a dagger? Here we go. 25% chance of a critical hit. Okay. It has a, it's a display item. So that's always nice to get. Right, so I'm going to do a quick loot. And looks like there's a couple things I can mine. And... Well, what's this over here? Hello?
Take Dane Halbert. Not a unique. Interesting. Alright. See you back at the start of the cave. So, we do in fact have some interesting loot from the lake. Turning around and going up. We have three bows. Canaris, Tempest, Honor, and Hawthorne. Or Hairthorn. Along with a loot chest. Ah, right. So, it seems like we have finally hit the uh, required level. To have Meridia's beacon spawn into the world. Let's take that and get the lovely message from Meridia herself. A new hand touches the beacon. Listen, hear me and obey. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you will destroy. Return my beacon to Mount Kilcreef. And I will make you the instrument of my cleansing light. Alright, so there you go. The Breaking of Dawn. I had been honestly waiting um, patiently for the beacon to spawn because Dawnbreaker would be an excellent addition to my character. Um, alongside that chest, we also have one on left up here. Hidden away. There we go. So be aware of the, that. Gonna get back into the habit of collecting alchemy ingredients. And let's discover this very quaint hunter's lodge. Everything is owned, but we do have an alchemy insight book. Take this and hold on to it. Whoop. I'll be back for it later. I'll pay you good. Fugitive. Um no time to talk. Snitch or double cross me and I'll kill you. I mean it. So, in fact, I will double cross him. Though I don't know what we received. Wasn't paying attention at all. Was it this leather army of bounty? Here we go. Yours, I submit. submit? He's going to talk to me. Someone run past just now. Yes, he went that way. Thanks. Bastard stole from me. I'll catch him though. Well, go get him. He's right there. I'll starve you into pieces. No? You're on the wrong way, my dude. Yep, there you go. Terrible shot. Try again. Yep, and for a third time. Stop str stop strafing and just... Uh, I'll lend a hand. There we go. Took too long. Alright. I won't worry about that. We'll just continue on.
Tower Ruin. Are you friendly? Mm hmm. You got guts, stranger. Two feral wolves. But you didn't flinch. Playing my arrows on monks. Say, that's close enough. They look raw, as if I didn't just save their life. You, though, the wolves liked. Forced me. Got curious. Wanted to see how far you'd make it. Looks like I slighted you. Or misread them. Hmm. You don't mind that I killed your wolves? Aren't my wolves. Can't own a wild beast. Free to roam, free to hunt, free to be hunted. Besides, no vengeance to spare. All for one wolf, and one wolf alone. Who are you hunting? My quarry is Lagby. You find her, you tell me, she dies. Why are you hunting her? Work in packs, but only two I consider kin. She was one of them. So you're avenging one friend by killing the other? Yeah. So you tracked her down to Knife Point Ridge? Can't track her. Does more than double back. Covers her prints like it was snow and dirt. So I go from camp to camp. Maybe follow an adventurer. Maybe get lucky. So something to be aware of is Bracken here is capable of becoming a follower. So if you're interested in him and his quest for vengeance, you can follow up with Bracken and his story. For now, um, not particularly interested in doing any follower quests. Potentially in the future, we can come back to any and all followers and complete their quest lines as a as part of the completionist content. But let's move on. The left hand side should work. Twin Sonak discovered. With the god awful um, mountain climbing mechanics of Skyrim getting in our way. And it looks like we're coming up on our objective. Probably going to be another set of witches. Probably a werewolf. Drop a save. Yep. Wow, getting ragdolled. Oh, I don't know what. That is. Oh, that must have been the aura going off at fifty percent. Interesting. Now I've got to work my work my way around again. And for some reason, I can't jump. Quickly knock this werewolf out. Wow. 
Wow. Where exactly is... Is she invisible? Whoa. Where'd she go? Hello? What? What happened here? Just teleport across the map. Or did she just go inside the cave? Probably, she probably went inside the cave. She didn't teleport across the map, though it did look like it. Alright. Take a moment to catch our breath before going in. Alrighty, so... Unfortunately, I had to redo that entire section again. I had to run from Moss Mother's Cavern all the way up because... This werewolf yeeting me off the cliff broke my ability to jump for some strange reason so i had to redo it and redoing it meant that i was able to catch the cron leader off um at the before she ran inside but let's go in julia or Ju yeah, Julia. Level 30. It's like a mage. We crack open this chest. Pop picking increase. really glad we have this skull basher i'll tell you that without the increased attack speed from this weapon her damage output probably would have just got me we get ahead which is part of the museum and that completes the blood's honor quest which means we can return to clutlag but not before we have a further look inside the cave. Hmm. Quick look around outside. Looks like we've got three or four separate directions that we can go. And I think that it is definitely... We're going to clear it out. So we'll go all four directions and we're going to clear each prong. Kill each one of them. Okay, so they're all level 30, which means I've got to be extra careful still. Help me. Get in there. Go. All right. One more down. Does she have a bit of loot? Doesn't seem like it. Be careful. Next. Racine. Racine. You belong to Racine now. Ooh. 
this one actually had a bit of loot, chicken eggs, barrel with some food. Yeah, you gotta be really, really quick. Run in, don't get distracted by the magic, because if you do, or if I do, probably just gonna get killed. Go. Oof. Always a little bit scary. An enchanting book, that's nice. And our Lord and Savior, the goat. Another chest with food. I think we've got one more. Yes. Grab that on the way out. Use your claws. Yep. Good. And facile, or facile. And that's the optional objective to clear out all of them. And the beautiful sound of a cleared dungeon. Ah, I knew at some point I was going to get over... Over encumbered. Here. Have those. Let's get going then. Chest. Ooh, some very very nice loot. Another insight book for destruction. And the Shrine of Hyacin. Hercene. Hercene is the huntsman and father of mean man beasts. He is the guardian of were creatures. So this improves attacks against weakened targets. Slay the living in open combat, especially those stronger than you. Live as a werewolf. I see no reason why we shouldn't take that. We're a werewolf. We, we kill creatures that are higher level than us. Seems very appropriate. Alrighty, with that being said, we have cleared out Glen Moral Coven. And we can now return to Pod Black. Okay, looks like we have an audience. And Ayla waiting for us? Silver hand. These two something has shifted in the moons, sister. What is it? Sensed the blood pulsing a little stronger of late. I had assumed you had as well. I think our potential is on the rise. Hercene smiles on us. Let's not question too much. The more we feed, the greater our prowess will grow. We could perhaps discover even more gifts of her scene. These two aren't a problem anymore. These two aren't a problem anymore. Alright. Two? I don't know where the other one is. We got so definitely on guard. Everyone's on guard. 
We are here for Codlac, though. Filkus. I was doing Codlac's bidding. I hope it was important, because it means you weren't here to defend him. The Silver Hand. They finally found enough courage to attack your Vaster. We fought them off, but the old man, Codlac, he's dead. Was anyone else hurt? No, but they made off with all our fragments of Wulfrag. But you and I are going to reclaim them. We will bring the battle to their chief camp. There will be none left living to tell their story. Only songs of your Vaster will be sung. We will avenge Codlac, and they will know terror before the end. Alrighty, so Blood's Honor is completed, though not in the way we had hoped and expected. Silverhand has ambushed our companions and killed off Codlac before he get the cure to him. Which is truly unfortunate. So, the follow-up to this quest is Purity of Revenge. Vilkas has come with me to avenge the death of Codlac by wiping out the Silver Hand. They've run off with all of the Wuthrad fragments to Drift Shade Refuge in the snowy hills east of Dawnstar. But this is an opportune time to cut for the episode. As always, thank you all for watching. Drop a comment with any feedback if you have any. I always appreciate it. Um, an additional question for everyone. Do you want me to complete each new area we come across and discover as I do, or simply come back to it so I stay on the path I had intended for the episode. Please let me know your thoughts. Like and subscribe if you're interested in any of my content and want to stay up to date with uploads. For now, I hope you have a good week, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.